Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. I hope that you're all doing really great this morning. And so, of course, we'll be taking a look at what is currently happening across the Atlantic and zooming into the Caribbean to see uh, the latest and, of course, uh, the forecast in terms of the rainfall activity. And then, of course, I'm going to be taking you guys through the latest expected in terms of that potential uh, storm off the southeastern coast of the U.S. And so before I go into details... Please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update. Okay, and so as we take a look at the general satellite imagery here, uh, we can see that there is quite a bit of activity noted across some areas well off the east coast of the U.S. And there's also some increased shower and thunderstorm activity within the vicinity of some sections of the southeastern U.S. as well. And uh, out in the tropical Atlantic, we see lots of convective activity, especially along the intertropical convergent zone. And we also have the, uh, the two tropical waves propagating westward in the area. So uh, let's take a closer look at the region and here we are seeing all of this activity and uh, all of that dry air, all of that Saharan dust lies to the north of where we're seeing all of this and that explains the reason uh, things are not very quiet within this region because there isn't too much dry air infiltration at this time. So we've got lots of convective activity taking place and of course as that tropical wave progresses uh, toward the west if it maintains this activity can help to induce a bit more shower and thunderstorm activity especially for parts of northeastern South America which would include Guyana, Suriname and French Guiana. And so heading closer to the Caribbean now, here we can see that uh, where we had that plethora of activity yesterday, most of that is moving out and dissipating. So the ABC Islands are in the clear now, beautiful sunshine this morning. Same story for some parts of the Leeward Islands, but for most of the uh, Lesser Antilles, likely that it's pretty cloudy there right now, uh, maybe with some showers at times. And we're going to be looking at what the models are expecting in terms of rainfall throughout today. Uh, but we see some showers and thunderstorm activity taking place just in the vicinity of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. And so as we drift more to the west, we can see that things are pretty much dry across most of the basin. We can see uh, some convective activity, lots of showers and thunderstorms down in parts of Colombia and uh, along Panama. And we also see some activity just uh, along the coast of Guatemala and some parts of southern Mexico as well. But aside from that activity, we're not seeing where much is happening across the region due to a dry air mass that is pretty much helping to suppress any convective buildup across the uh, most of the Caribbean region right now. And so now we're moving on to what the models are expecting in terms of the rainfall. And so beginning with the GFS and of course less rainfall activity is expected today compared to yesterday because as I showed you guys earlier, uh, we see that a lot of the activity is pretty much dissipating and moving out to the east. And so uh, we can see here that some substantial rainfall is expected over into parts of Colombia and Panama and of course uh, heading to other areas such as parts of southern Venezuela. Uh, parts of Guyana, most of French Guyana and Suriname, we can see that some rainfall activity is also likely throughout today. And of course, this is going to be the trend for uh, the southern South American territories because, of course, we have that intertropical convergence zone, which is pretty active in terms of shower and thunderstorm activity uh, heading to and throughout the summer. And then uh, going to the Lesser Antilles, we see that some rainfall activity is also likely across most areas. We see maybe a bit of higher totals just in the vicinity of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. We also see that some rainfall is expected for Hispaniola and parts of Jamaica and even uh, over into Cuba. But going over into Central America, maybe some isolated showers and thunderstorms, uh, but nothing much really anticipated uh, for that area. And then as for the Euro, Euro is showing more rainfall activity for some parts of Northern South America and uh, expecting that in the Caribbean, most of that is going to be within the vicinity of the Leeward Islands, maybe going down to Guadalupe there about and of course for Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands as well but for other areas maybe some afternoon showers or so but uh, not much rainfall activity is expected especially across the west and of course uh, the ABC Islands as well and so guys now we want to talk about what uh, they're anticipating in terms of that potential system of the southeastern coast of the US so we're going to be looking at the latest run from the ICON GFS and Euro models and of course if 
are not familiar with this map, the black lines you're seeing, they're called isobars, which are imaginary lines that join areas of equal pressure. And so when we see them being closed in a circular manner with the pressure being at least 10, 13 millibars or lower, that is a low pressure system, which can sometimes be a tropical cyclone. And the and of course, the colors, those greens, yellows, that is indicating the precipitation rate. And so as we take a look at this map here, uh, the forecast time is noted right there. So as we look at what the icon is expecting, going to Thursday and Friday, it is expecting that low pressure area to develop and loiter off the southeastern coast of the U.S. But notice that the activity is decreasing with the system as we head to the end of the week. Now, uh, that is likely as a result of a uh, wind shear within the region. Of course, uh, things are not highly conducive to allow for development. So when that low pressure area develops, it might struggle a lot. But... Uh Going on to the Euro model here, as that low pressure area loiters off the southeast, it gets itself together. We're seeing all that activity, but eventually as it loiters, it's going to be, uh, the model is expecting that it will drift away from the states and not actually move inland while weakening. So uh, again, likely the impact of the wind shear because uh, ocean temperatures are not very, very cool within that region, especially with the Gulf Stream, which is a current of warm water. So uh, going to the GFS model now, GFS is... Uh, expecting that this is going to definitely develop and make its way inland into South Carolina. So very interesting here. And this is uh, expected as we're going to be heading to Saturday. So uh, nothing has been marked on the National Hurricane Center seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook. Uh, however, I mean, with this kind of consistency that we've been seeing for quite some time now, I really think that they're going to be highlighting an area very, very soon, maybe within the next coming uh, few days or so. But of course, I'm going to be keeping you guys posted and of course if you're in the southeastern u.s please keep an eye on this uh because of course we could definitely see something even if it is weak it could still be strong enough to do some damage and so to mitigate that uh preparation is required and so as i said i'll keep you guys posted and that is pretty much it for this update so if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comments and you can also share your thoughts there and of course remember to always be otherwise